And that brings us to another topic, and that is the learning technology that's behind it all. So let's look at the learning technology stack. Um, Stefan, from, um, from what you're seeing with working with the organizations within the doc market, are they util utilizing different learning technologies compared to their international counterparts? Yes, no, I would say that, first of all, uh, usually uh, uh, the organization uh, have the, the, one of the best learning management uh, system, you know, so, so, so the big brands are the same wherever you are, and they, they are global, no, even if you have strong local vendors. But, you know, the, the, the learning stack does not surprise someone from UK, a, a learning director or, or the CEO of a training business. So an association based in UK, in Canada, in France, or, or in Spain, because the, the, the big learning management system will, will be uh, the, the same. The market, I would say more than anywhere else, is looking to have one only system for learning, you know, because, you know, ERP has been invented in the dark region, you know, so it creates, I think, two very big expectations gap. You know, and there is a kind of misunderstanding, you know, because there are this market is looking for a one system, you know, because ACP has been in, invented years and years ago, and it was a one system to run all the operation. So that's a, a big expectation. So they expect one system to manage both employee training and client partner education, while it's as of today, different learning system, you know, so, so they will have, you know, not necessarily the same LMS being good uh, at both, you know. Um, <clears throat> second uh, uh, expectation gap, I think, is that they would expect one system to manage instructor-led training and virtual instructor-led training in one end, so in-person, in-presence uh, training and e-learning. So they buy a learning management system, usually hoping that they will manage everything in one system, but the, the LMS have been designed for learner, they have been designed for e-learning, uh, and still, you know, they have to manage uh, manually uh, in Excel spreadsheet, the, 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 uh, the, the, the training operation like scheduling, finding the best available trainer, uh, tracking the cost, and, you, you know, it's not where they would expect by your level of productivity and efficiency a standpoint. Second, I would say that the user experience, we're a lot talking about the user experience, confusing the learner experience and the user experience, because the back office user deserve a good experience too. And this, this experience is not always here. You know, they have hundreds of clicks and it's usually a problem. And also instructor collaboration, we have already mentioned the subject where, you know, it's manual. We are seeing Excel spreadsheet, Google spreadsheet, uh, everyone, you know, listing, okay, Sven can train on that, Jennifer on this, Jennifer speaks Spanish. Etc. And it's a lot of manual inefficiency, phone calls, when are you available? And <clears throat> so there is a, a, a really expectation gap with, with the one system. Um, and <clears throat> so uh, uh, I think that for clarity, you know, LMS could be called an e-learning management system more than a, a learning management system or learner management system because they manage very well the, the learner, that's their mission, uh, and they manage very well the employee. So it's mostly system for learner and internal audience. And there is this, this expectation that they would manage also external audience at the same time. So like client partner and that they would manage instructor led training and virtual instructor led training. So what do you, what, does it answer to your question, uh, Jen? Yes, yeah, thank you, Stefan. Stefan, what are you what are you seeing at Fosbay first from a pure technology perspective and then expanding into the entire learning ecosystem, learning technology ecosystem? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess the DACH market is probably the number two market in Europe for most learning system vendors. So the international players have mm -hmm. certainly um, built presence, um, built momentum in the market and are also from a you know, brand recognition perspective visible here on, you know, on in the, the various events and so on. And there is certainly a local um, market uh, with local providers that exist. So some local players, both on the suite um, and maybe also on the specialist side. Uh, there's certainly also very big players uh, who um, uh, um, have started here. And, and had, have taken that international. There's maybe a few actually also who are aspiring to become a bit more international and moving out of the country. So there's a lot of, I guess, knowledge that they have with German organizations, with manufacturing companies, with those, you know, um, 
blue chip hidden champions that nobody has heard of because they're just doing some screws or whatever um, uh, but they are really the global market leader for this and I think that is an experience that they are then using into their system and into the bringing that into other markets so I think it's an interesting um, uh, an interesting market from what they are using certainly as a um, it's it's the same similar players to what you would see internationally. Um, as I said, there's a local sub market, but I think a lot of the companies in the past years have um, spent a lot of effort in digitizing, um, put a lot of money into that, and 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 digitizing the learning um, more. So introduced you know virtual instructional ed kind of things, or introduced virtual classrooms, those kind of technologies. Um, so maybe that was at the expense of what they have done for the for the back office, the training operations kind of systems. And um, you know, if you if you want to kind of simultaneously impact uh, learning adoption and ROI, um, then you need to have multiple things in in place that can help you build out the skills that um, gives you an efficient way of delivering things and blending them together. So I think that is really an important point for German um, uh, for Germany head uh, for organizations headquartered here in Germany. Um, I guess uh, room for improvement is there as well. Um, many have maybe started to manage their um, training in Excel and like those. I still remember these big wall charts on the on the wall where they had all the plans and all the resources and little stickers and moving that around. And um, that obviously technology is now able to fully support and, and automate and infuse AI into that planning process. So that's a big opportunity for, for some organizations who haven't gone down that route to, to automate. Um, GDPR compliance uh, is a big topic. So I guess that is the first question most German organizations will, will ask, is it GDPR compliant? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that uh, is, is really an important uh, point uh, when I guess doing business over here that vendors are proven and tested in into that space as well. So um, many have maybe bought some some systems more um, on the shinier side of things and maybe have not so much worried about the back office. And I think it's maybe now a time again uh, also to look at um, how to optimize and get the efficiencies going because obviously of the economic situation, it's quite an important one as well. Thank you.